Wouldn't it just be so cool to run your own copy of a chat AI like ChatGPT at home? I mean, no interference, no data leaks, no privacy concerns. Sounds great, doesn't it? Well, it turns out that you can, and it's ridiculously easy. Much to my surprise too, you don't even need a 4090, although it would help. I've been running it on a 2080 Ti, but I mean anything over apparently 11 gigabytes or more of VRAM should just about scrape by. The more VRAM and compute power, the better though. In theory, you can also run this just on your CPU alone if you have enough system memory or on an AMD card too, but that is a little less stable just to th thanks to just how bleeding edge these tools are, so your mileage may vary on that one. So how do you do this then? Well, much like Stable Diffusion and the automatic 11.11 web GUI, there is a web GUI tool on GitHub that makes this whole thing ridiculously simple. I'll link to everything in the description so you can try this yourself, but the main thing is that this is all based on Limsys Fast Chats, and they're frankly amazing Vicuna model. I'll explain more about the models in a bit, but this web GUI repo just needs to be downloaded, and then you run the setup batch file, assuming you're on Windows, and then you just run the, the sort of start window bat file, it will open up a command prompt window and will download all of the necessary installers and things. It will ask you what GPU you have, Nvidia, AMD, Apple M1, or running it on CPU. I had some bugs just trying to run it on CPU only mode, so maybe that option isn't quite ready yet, but the Nvidia option I can confirm does work. It will download all of the necessary packages and files, and then it will start running the web UI. You can find that at localhost 7860 in your web browser. Although if you want to run this on you know, a different system, you want to run this on a system, but then be able to access it from say your phone or another device on your network, you want to open up the webgui.py file in a text editor and add the dash dash listen flag to the CMD flags line pretty much at the top. Once you have the webgui open, you'll need to download some models. Now, this is where things get interesting, as there's actually a whole load of different models, much like Stable Diffusion's wide variety of models for that. The one I want to focus on here is called Vicuna, which got its start as Facebook's Llama model, and has been trimmed sort of and, and tuned considerably to the point where training that model from scratch only costs around $300. There are others like Stanford's Alpaca model, GPTJ, and a bunch more, but Vicuna, specifically the 13 billion parameter model, is what I'll be using here. Now, one of the quirks of this whole large language model business is that the models officially aren't what you're called what you'd call turnkey. Limsys, the open research collective from UC Berkeley, who made both fast chats and Vicuna say that you should request the original Llama model and weights from Meta and then run a conversion with their Delta to create Vicuna. Now that is a rather memory intensive process with the 13B model requiring 60 gigabytes of system RAM to do that conversion. Now I did actually try and do this but despite filling in the form to request, request the weights from Meta they never replied. Happily though, some lovely people have uploaded pre-converted models to Hugging Face, the go-to location for all their AI model needs. All you'll need to do here is just copy the name of the repo and head to the model tab in the text generation web UI, and then down at the bottom, paste in the name and click download. Assuming that you have enough VRAM to load that model in, you can then select the model from the top drop down list. You might need to press refresh first and then select it, uh, and that will you know, load it in. You'll also want to select four W bits and a group size of 128, as that's what this model is expecting. I mean, it's literally in the file or repository name. If you don't have enough VRAM to run the, set, uh, the 13B model, the 7B model might be a better fit, as that should run with more like 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Okay, so now the model is loaded in, we can basically start chatting. 
This web UI has a whole load of options I want to quickly run past you. The text generation page is obviously where you'll be chatting to the models with options like regenerate, impersonate or clear history. The chat modes let you customize the style of the interaction and down at the bottom is the character gallery. This is where you can basically give the AI an image and a personality to follow and you can probably see where this is going. The chat settings page is where all of that sort of character creation happens, although the parameters tab is the one that I'm more interested in. The max new token slider at the top essentially controls how long your replies are, so you'll probably want to bump that up. You've also got a bunch of generation parameters, of which you can use presets to set them up, like the Llama Precise preset. The model page is where you will have downloaded your model, but also includes a load of options for GPTQ and Transformers. Training is really cool. Basically, you can train the model yourself, something that I want to try and do in a future video with a more powerful GPU. And finally, there is the interface modes. Uh, you can set a load of different extensions here, like 11 Labs text-to-speech, Google Translate, and even OpenAI themselves. You can also tweak the command line and launch parameters here too, like adding that listen flag if you haven't already added it to the, the web GUI Pi file so that you can make that, you know, this uh, web UI available on your network. Okay, so that's a tour of the UI. Let's try this, you know, chatbot out. Asking it some basic questions or, you know, for a, a simple output like a, a professional email telling your boss to stop micromanaging you all works pretty well. If you set the max tokens limit to a, a, a sort of too low value, you might need to press the continue button for it to finish generating your response, but as you'd expect, you get a pretty decent output. If we compare side by side what Vicuna and ChatGPT said, just the free version of ChatGPT mind you, uh, you'll notice that ChatGPT is more willing to write more. The, the volume and, if I'm honest, the quality of text is a fair bit greater with ChatGPT than with Vicuna, although both of these do serve as a usable response. I found that with this request in particular, ChatGPT gave a more natural sounding email, whereas Vicuna just outright said the word micromanaging, which is you know not the sort of thing you might expect to see in a professional email. It's not bad by any means, but I can see why you might prefer ChatGPT's output over Vicuna's. For a bit of a tougher challenge, I thought that since we've heard so much about how ChatGPT can pass things like the bar exam to you know, give legal advice or how it can pass medical exams, which means that you should trust its medical advice, why not ask it some medical questions? Well, I looked up some UK medical exam questions and asked both Vicuna and ChatGPT. The first question is about medical consent. It reads, an 89 year old man has a basal cell carcinoma on his forehead, which requires excision. He has dementia. The clinical nurse feels he is not competent to give consent for surgery, which is the more appropriate action for obtaining consent. Now, this is a bit of a multiple choice or, you know, sort of multi-answered selection. So uh, those answers include ask a psychiatrist to assess his cognitive function, ask his GP to sign the consent form, ask his wife to sign it, ask the patient, or ask the surgeon to assess his mental capacity. Now, all of these answers are sort of designed to sound reasonable if you don't know what the correct answer is. So what did Vicuna say? Well, it said to get the GP to sign it, or at least witness signing, because the GP has knowledge of the patient's medical history and can provide context regarding the patient's current condition. Okay, that sounds reasonable. What did ChatGPT say? It said to get his wife to sign the consent form as a, a surrogate decision maker. So what's the answer? Well, the answer is E ask the surgeon to assess his mental capacity. The clinic nurse suggested that he might not be fit to consent, but not as a definitive he is not. 
but both Vicuna and ChatGP just decided that he wasn't competent, although Vicuna did get a little closer by saying that the GP would have context to know better. I mean, it's still wrong, but it's arguably a little closer than ChatGPT's answer. Okay, let's try another one. The next question is about a 21-year-old woman who has increasing severe pain in her left leg. She broke it and was put in a cast two days ago, so what do? Elevate the limb, refer to orthopedics, remove the cast, replace the cast with increased padding, or re-x-ray the fracture. Vicuna says to elevate the limb to reduce swelling and then refer to orthopedic specialists. ChatGPT says that she should go straight to orthopedics for further assessment. Now, the correct answer here is option C, remove the cast because she is suffering from compartment syndrome. Now, while both of these you know, chatbots did get the answer wrong, ChatGPT did actually call out compartment syndrome as a, a possible diagnosis and as part of its answer. Now, it said that the specialist should be the one to diagnose that though, which I don't think is a bad thing to suggest, even if it isn't quite the exact correct answer that the exam would be looking for. Okay, let's give it one last one. This one is about a 14-year-old girl who is requesting uh, the pill as she's already active with her boyfriend, and her parents are unaware of the appointment. Should the doctor offer advice and prescribe the pill? contact her parents, contact the local safeguarding team, contact the police, or explain that it's just illegal to prescribe the pill. Vicuna spits out a whole load of text here, saying that while it would normally be illegal, in this case, prescribing the pill is allowed and is the best course of action. And perhaps get her tested too. Finally, a, a, an actually fully correct answer. ChatGPT also gets it right, and with what sounds like almost genuine care and compassion in the rather lengthy explanation too. I know that it isn't, but it's kind of interesting to see. So first off, no, you should never trust any of these bots for medical, legal, or really any advice. They are not trained professionals, and you shouldn't treat them as such. Secondly, I think it's pretty clear that Vicuna isn't as adept as ChatGPT is. Perhaps there is some more tuning to be done in the you know, text generation web UI settings to get some better answers, but I would say that it's still a little way off yet. I think that it's pretty clear that this whole text generation web UI thing is made for the sort of people who want a virtual friend style interface rather than just a chat GPT clone. There are definitely a few features that I would like to see uh, kind, of, kind of done a bit better, like better chat history and handling. You can download the chat history as a JSON file and then upload it later to go back to an existing chat, but it would be nice if that's a bit more automatic, like ChatGPT does, where you can swap between the different chats. The models themselves will improve though, and there are plenty of other models to try too, so you might find that something works a little bit better than Vicuna, but it is gonna be hard to compete with OpenAI's billions of dollars worth of compute type. Still, it's really cool to be able to run this on consumer hardware, and not even the absolute top end stuff too. If you do end up giving this a try, let me know what you get up to in the comments down below. Now, like I said, I will leave links to both the text generation web UI and the uh, Vicuna model and Hugging Face and Limsys and Vicuna themselves if you want to check them out. I would love to hear if, uh, you know, if you do get up to something with it, feel free to let me know in the comments. If you wanna stay up to date on these videos, including things like a training video, if I can get my hands on a powerful enough GPU, do hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. If you want to check out more videos technically like this one, the Stable Diffusion one is going to be on the end cards, but also more standard tech reviews will also be there too. If you want to support the channel, you know, keep me making these videos, you can do so through YouTube, Patreon, pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one, or a load of other designs I've made myself. There's a load of other affiliate links in the description you can check out. Otherwise, that's kind of it. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.